Hi everyone, welcome back. Just say good day when you're on. Hi, Louise. Welcome. Um, I'm going to try and do this as quick as I possibly can um, without, you know, um, you guys missing on anything. Hi, Donna. Hi, Lynette. Welcome, welcome. Terry, g'day. Now, you can create your own library, and the way to do that is to create these little little almost like cards so if you think of a coaster size about that size so we, we want them about four inches big or five maximum before you start I forgot to ask do you stock chenille fabric no no I don't um no no I've got a little bit of minky but not chenille sorry all right so what I end up doing this is a piece of paper I'm just going to use my ruler just because it's two inches, uh, two and a half inches, sorry. And I know that they'll be roughly the same. So you're going to have some squares and you're going to do this on your fabric. Hi, Stella. Thanks, Louise. So you've just got a grid. Okay, and you're going to number them, um, or you don't have to, I suppose. You can put a label on them, so you can go stipple, and you'll do this on your piece of fabric as well, and you might go, um, okay, so um, a, a square stipple, so SQ stipple, uh, and you might go swirls, and you might go cross hatch, whatever you're going to do. So then you are going to do your design. Okay, your stipple is going to be like that. I'll just zoom in. I think the wrong way. There we go. You can get in there a bit closer. You can see what I'm doing. Oops, this way. And your square stipple might be. You might. Oops, a bit of a triangle there. That's not really square. And that's going to be this one. Your swirls are your obvious swirls and your crosshatch is going to be these ones. Or you might turn around and go, well, I'm going to make them go on that angle. Whichever one you decide. You can have uh, all sorts of different crosshatches. Okay. So that's the sort of thing you're going to do. And then we're going to cut those out in the fabric, of course. And you can then staple them together or pin them together, however you want to do it, or sew them together and create your own little library. So on a piece of board, I'm just going to turn that over because the fold's there. Black that. Black. And I'm going to draw the centre line. That's the daisy. A bit of bump under there. Oh, that's the hole. <laughs> Oh dear. And then a quarter of an inch across, I'm going to do another line, roughly. I'm not being precise here. So it gives me two lines. So I've got one there, and I'll do it darker so you can see two lines there. Okay. Then you're going to come across, and I'm just using my mat as a rough guide. So one, two, three, four, and you're going to do your second line. And again, it's rough. Oh, you found me. Good. All right, so that one, then move a quarter inch across. Didn't go all the way down. Quarter inch across, roughly, and then do another line. Then you're going to go from that line, one, two, three, and four, and that's your edge, which is perfect. That's what we want. Okay, this is just a scrap bit, bit of white. So you can use any colour, whatever you desire. So from that line there, you go one, two, three, four, and roughly 
do yourself a nice line. That's the days that didn't draw very well, did it, Michelle? Try again. There we go. Quarter inch across. Do another one. Move your fabric over one, two, three, and four. There. And your quarter inch line. Okay. Then you're going to turn it that way. It's got a rough center. So that's my, um, so I'll just look at this, see how wide it is. One, two, three, four, one, uh, one, two, three, four, space. So I'm only going to get two, so I'm going to find the center. <clears throat> I think I'm um, <clears throat> getting run down. I'm getting a sore throat. I'll have to shepherd and I'll have to, I won't be able to slow down, but I'll have to, um, take a couple of days break I think and just reboot okay so I've got my double line there through the centre um yep this is a live one Debbie well done <laughs> one two three four and go across this is a good thing to do with scrap fabric something that you don't know what to do with it it's just sort of a random piece of fabric and you're sort of going yeah it's not big enough for a pillow it's no, it's uh, not what I want to use in a quilt, but it could be perfect for using as a little bit of a library that you can create. Okay, so you're just creating these little boxes, one, two, three, and four across, rule down, and like I say, this is a rough measurement. Don't stress if it's not exact because this is just for you to refer back to at any time you need to, okay? Now, oh, no, okay, that's all right. So getting a black pen, because it's easier for me to see, I'm going to go to this box over here, which you might not be able to see. There it is. And I'm just going to write in here. I'm just going to write, oh, try, stipple, okay, just in pen. Do it in text if you want to, stipple. Then this one here, I'm going to write swirls. This one here, I'm going to write a square dot stipple. And every time you find a new design that you want to try, create your library, okay? Then we're going to go flower floral swirl okay then we move it over again and we're going to go bubbles then we're going to do this one and we're going to go cross hatch and you can't stipple. Do you know what? People think that stippling is the one to start with. It is so not the one to start with. It is probably one of the harder ones. We're going to go paisley. And this one we're going to go, um, we're going to go uh, more in the sashiko. So we're just going to go sashiko and we're just going to go dot one. All right. Now, I'm just going to turn it upside down just so you can see. I haven't tried to do it yet. No. So with the Sashiko one, I'm just going to draw a line underneath these. Just get it back on my mat. Just under there because my area is going to be under it. Okay. There and there. Same with these. So as soon as you find something new or something that you want to give a go, this is where you, where you do it. With the sashiko and the cross hatch, I even if I was on a quilt, I need lines. So I'm going to draw, and even though I'm doing it in pencil for this experiment, that's great. So with the sashiko one. Um, I'm going to just do them half inch apart 
from there and they're just going to go straight up and down. I'm not being precise, I just want to get the lines on there. And until they're not precise and same with the cross hatch, I'm going to do them half inch apart. Oops, it does. Draw a line, did it? So half inch across there. Okay, just as if I was on a quilt. Then turn it the other way and do the lines this way. So half an inch the whole way. So there, you can go all the way through, doesn't matter. And this is how you start prepping yourself. When you're doing a quilt, you measure the area, you make sure, you know, you divide it by so many, blah, 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 and you just make sure that you can get those squares in there like the ruler you're using. Yes, Maureen, so this is a two and a half inch ruler. Um, we call it a strip ruler because if you're doing two and a half strips, that's what you use. But now, this one really I get, I use a lot for just measuring, um, whereas now I just use the, um, the stripology ones when I'm cutting a lot of two and a half strips, it seems to be a lot um, easier. I can get these for you. I think they're around about the $19, $20 mark and um, statewide supply them. So if you did want one, just let me know. Uh, I'm going past there on Monday, so I'll be able to get them. Um, and Pat, just letting you know, I'm going to be getting your, I think if not, Dot already has them, but I'm going to also make sure that we've got your uh, two white uh, zippers for you, 12 inch zippers. All right, so now I'm ready to go. Well, almost. I'll zoom out a little just so you can see what I'm doing. I need a bit of backing fabric. Well, this is nowhere near big enough. So maybe do, just um, have to get another piece looking at that. Here we go. So getting my piece of batting. And this again is out of just my scraps. It's just the poly. I haven't used anything special. It's left over. Okay, just FYI. When you're doing these things, try not to use your best of your best. Sure, Maureen, I'll write that down. I'll finish doing this. And I'm not even using a blade. I'm not going to use a blade when it comes to cutting the, the backing fabric. Um, you don't have to make your backing fabric that little bit bigger or anything. This one here got some paint on it, so I'm just going to use this and just lay it on top. Um, and that's going to be perfect. And just, I mean, you can even tear it. It doesn't make any difference. You're just getting a piece of fabric to go on the back, all right? Use the most ugliest piece of fabric you can find if you want to. Um, it's this is this project is not designed to use your best. And I'll just write that ruler down. Okie doke. Next. <clears throat> so from here, this is where we've got to go, okay, what are we doing? Next, first things we're going to do is we're going to stitch right on those lines, okay? Um, so to do that, I'm just going to move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to zoom it right in. Now you're a bit behind me, but you should be able to see from here. Everyone can see that fine. Gloves on. We're still quilting. Whether you, you know, you, whether you, I, I use them in piecing and everything. I use, especially use these gloves when I'm doing binding, putting any sewing, any binding on with the machine, because that stops me from having to push that fabric through. And it, you know, it's so thick and so heavy. So I'm just going to move my coffee so I knock it over. I'm not even pinning this, okay? Placing it under. My lines are not going to be perfect, my stitch lines. They are really just basting lines. 
Um, and just press start and just quickly stitch down those lines. No matter if they're wobbly, they're just there to hold it together. And there's one. Go across and back up the other way. And then up. This is the beauty of free motion. We don't have to stop and start all the time. We don't want to. Just got to grab that side. She's quite um, hard on the corner. And I can see um, I'm going to get this all done pretty much, I reckon, in one sitting, not have to stop and cut off in anything. When you've got a small edge on the side there, it is hard to hold on to. Sometimes you do have to use your tips and fingers, go down. Oops, it is, a bit of a wobble. Ding, 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 ding. Dan said, hang on, what are we learning today? We are learning. Uh, oh, Stella wants a pair of those scissors. Yep, no drama. Uh, uh, ruler, sorry. Um, we are learning to make ourselves a little bit of a library because I do a lot of free motion stuff and I think that, you know, you're, you're probably looking at it going, oh, there's no way I can do that. Well, there is. Um, you just need to create or, or remember to do that or remember how to do that. You just need to create, just stitching up here again, and I'm just going to go right up the top again. Create your own little library of designs and you can make new ones. Um, I mean, you can go on any of those free motion quilting um, YouTube sites and look what other people are doing as well and create more library. The idea is information is key. I mean, you're only as poor as the knowledge you've got. So the more knowledge you have on how to do these things, the better you, you get at it because you'll be practicing more, okay? And the more you watch, the more you draw, the more you stitch, the better you are. So I'm going all the way down. Yeah, I've just sort of done like a massive sort of cross hatch, I suppose you could call it that. Um, a random thing. Oh, seeing it okay. No worries. Yep. Just moving across. I did make a bit of a wobble on that one, but that's all right. Should be all right. Sorry, I, I froze. What ruler and how much, please? I think that, Claire, that ruler is roughly around the $19, $20 mark. It's not my stock. It's from Wendy at Statewide. So I would just have to let you know on that. Um, I don't think they're much more than that. And they're two and a half inch ruler by, I think it's, um, oh, we're done. Uh, question. 16 inches so like if you were to fold your fabric in half or whatever you've got folded fabric and you want to cut two and a half inches strips you literally just go you know bang 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 but like I said I, I tend to use um I don't say his knowledge is poor <laughs> no not at all darling um so yeah so I tend to use the uh stripology ones now they seem to be a little bit easier to use the foot I am using is an open toe foot. This is a specific one to Janome where it actually screws up and down. I don't think I'll know if any other company has it, but it's an open toe. So I can actually see, um, and it's a free motion foot or darning foot, but I want to be able to see inside there where I'm stitching. All right, so. Let's start, and I'll just see if I can get this a little bit closer for you and just 
zoom it down so you can see what I'm doing. So hopefully. Now I'm using these lines and I'm going to continue with this crosshair thing. I'm going to speed her up a little. And my crosshairs are just going up and down. Now to do this, I know if I want to do it all in one go, um, I need to start at one side, go all the way and then travel along and then do the whole way across the other way. And I would be pretending that these are my seams in a block, you know. Um, I can get these feet, Louise, if you've got a um, Janome machine, again, from um, statewide. I don't stock them personally. Um, but, yeah, I can get them for you. Um, God, no idea. I think they're, they're over $100 for the feet. But you get three different... Um, attachments that you can put on at the bottom but I like that open toe all right so let's get going so we're going to start here we're going to go up and then across and down now because you've got the ruled lines there the more you practice the better you'll get it staying straight those lines in theory would literally be washed out because they would be chalk or they would be the blue line pens. Um, I'm doing freehand, so I'm not expecting it to be immaculately perfect, but I do know that, whoops, there we go, if I, um, I'm going across now, and down, and down the crossways. Um, that I can't, oh, I've lost my train of thought. Sorry, I do that. I do know that um, because I'm doing it freehand. If it's not immaculate, it doesn't really matter. Um, and the faster I go, like as you move my hands just that little bit faster than maybe I normally would, the straighter the line. And that's why I speed the machine up a little, so that I still get that nice consistent stitch. Okay, so that's my cross hatch, and it's done. I can cut off. If you can, that would be great. Sure. Would that foot fit on a singer? I don't think so. So there's my cross hatch. Okay, so now I've got one with cross hatch. Now I'm going to do the sashiko. And what, what I mean by sashiko is that, that half moon shape, so that curve. Now, if you can do, if you can write a letter C, then you're laughing. Now, with this, you want to also start and stop in this, you know, you'll start in one place and you go all the way around the whole thing um, and then you'll stop um, when you're finished without having to cut off, right? So I'm going to try and do that. It doesn't always work that way. And I'm going to start here at the bottom and work my way around. So I do a curve from one point to the other, to the other, to the other. And just try and keep them consistent. So if you make small ones, then go one at the side, one at the top, one at the side, back up the side, one at the top, one at the side, the other one at the side, back up the top, down, back up, across the top, down, back up, across the top, down, back up, across the top, and just keep going in that format. Um, then we go across, 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 and keep going to the end, then back up one side, across, down, back up. And we just keep going in that pattern, and then I have that sashiko look. Not stitch, sashiko look. I think they call it an orange peel. I don't know. I'm not up with all the fancy names of everything. I just make my own up. <laughs> um, I don't get time to, to study these things. So that's another line. And then all of a sudden, you've got a full area stitched with this really intricate design. It looks really fabulous when you're done. 
So down, across. I might need to move the camera, hey? Do you, want, do you want me to try and move the camera? There, and then up, cross. Oops, the daisy, and then we miss this spot. There, cross, that. So you'll be going one direction. You'll be just doing one side of one line. When you go back the other direction, you're literally doing the sides and then the top. So you'll do across the top of one, like that, then up a side, across the top, and then a side. And that's the same side getting back up, and you just keep going. And then back up here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to go up. I've got one more little row to do. It's a half row. So you can do this pattern around applique or, you know, other, other quilting stitches, like, you know, if you've done some feathering and you want to go around it, um, that's really good for that. And I'm going to go and do this bottom one, just to finish off. And the side. And we're done. Seeing fine, great. All right, so then we've just done that one. And I can show you that. Oh, let me see if I can zoom it in. There you go. You see how they're like a little orange peel? You see there? All right. So we've done those two in a, in a matter of no time. Let's do, and I'm going to do the bubbles next break up the monotony so I'm just going to start in one corner and just work my way sort of across on an angle okay so get rid of that thread put down and needle down um Louise if you could send me a the model of your machine just so I make sure I get the right one just send me a quick text okay still got the speed up because we're doing circles. If I don't have it going fast, then I'll get square corners on my circles. Now these are more of a figure eight. So you go around one way, and I'm making them different sizes, and then go back the other way for the next one. Around one way, and back the other way for the next one. Around, and you do have to travel right around sometimes just to get that to fit in to get to the point where you need to be starting your new circle okay around and out another one and out so do a couple of small ones and then a couple of bigger ones and out, down there, going the other way, come back around, do another bigger one, back right around, do a smaller one, going the other way. Back around, I'm going to fill that up with a little one in there, a little gap. And I'm not filling every single gap, I'm leaving little gaps in between, which is fine they don't have to touch it just creates more texture for you to look at it's a little bit different than doing a pebble where everything is full on stitched in you know 
just got to go back up the top here a bit and fill up some of these areas. Up here, the hair in there, we'll get that out later. A little one there. And then we're going to come back over to a larger one. And if you notice, I'm keeping my hands consistently the same sort of speed. I'm not changing much. It's a bit la la landish. A bit like doing a micro stickle, you get a little bit la la ish. You do sort of that repetition thing. Okay, another one. So if you notice one way, roll it around again, and then I'll come out and do the other way. I might put a little one in there, roll it out again, and the other way, and a little one in there maybe, and out again. Ouch. Little one out, little one out, And as you can see, I'm using a tone on tone. So this just shows you how easy it is to cover up any kind of little indiscretions. They just blend in because they're the same color as the actual fabric. They're not obvious. So if I do wobble away somewhere, it's no big deal. And we're done. That's it. All right. So there's your bubbles. You can see them there. See how you got larger one and small? Pretty, pretty good. Then we go to paisley. So now paisley is like a, um, a teardrop. And then you go back. All right. And you can do another one if you want to. And then you come out and do another one off that. All right, so I'm going to start here and just sort of work my way across. I'm going to keep them reasonably large because I don't want to take forever doing this. So out, and I put a little bit of an angle on it. And then out again, around. And I'm using my ruler, uh, my foot, sorry, as a, as a guide of the distance. Then I can come out here and do another in. If I angle it out to the left, then it will curve around in the direction I want to go next. Do a straight one, it'll go straight down. They can have two or three. They don't all have to have the same. And then one out there. And you can echo love to echo because I want to get all the way around the other side and we'll echo again come out to another e and out again one more and I'm going to angle that this way change the direction of it I'm taking it towards the right side and I'm going to go again. So the third one, I'm going to echo to fill in that area there and come back with an echo. And then come out and do one here. And come down. And if you end up on the wrong side, like so if I end up over here doing my third one, just echo back around, do another one around and get yourself back over. I want to be over here so I can do the next one. 
and I can see I've got a bit of a gap so I'm going to come out there echo that one and do a little one here and go there and back out and I'm touching the one behind it as a general rule out bounce back and we're going to do this Little one here just to fill that gap. Echo, echo again, get yourself out of there. And we've got one more we can do, and we're going to do it from this corner over here. There, there, and back again. And stop. Wish I, it was dark thread. I think I am blind in one eye. I uh, can't see out the other. <laughs> um, that's without your glasses. All right, so there it is there. All right. So I can do it. I've, I've just run out of white thread. So look at that. How's that? I hear you. Let's change the okay. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it in a light blue. You should be able to see that. Maybe. No, I'll do it in, I'll do it in a pink. Hopefully this pink will be all right. Let's do it. All right, we're going to do the floral swirl. I'm going to start up here and I'm going to work my way down. Now, actually, I might just do the swirl first because then it starts you on a basis, then it'll work you into the, the floral one. All right, swirls are nice and simple, Look, says everyone. Swirl is going out, coming in, and then pause and point back. Okay. So we go out, in, pause, and come back out. And we can do it again. And then come back out, in, and you pause. It's a split second. It really is. It's a very small pause. If I want to stop and reposition, I'll always stop on a point. Okay. And I'm trying not to make these look like they're in a row. So I'm going to come out here. In. Give myself plenty of room. And then out again. Trying not to flatten them out. I'm going to echo there. And I'm going to come out and do a small one here. And then bounce around to get myself back out of there a little. And then come out. And over here, I'm going to bounce. And then I'm going to run down the seam, down there, bounce back, up that seam, come back over. And then go in it, do another one. Come in, pause, and back out. All right, we're going to do another E. Go in, pause, and back out. I need to move my hands. So stop there. That's better. Can and is it well now? Can see it well now. Yep, no dramas. Good. All right. Next, I'm going to go out here. Right on there. And another one in this corner. I'm making it a little bit bigger. In there. Come out. Around. A bit wonky. That's all right. In, bounce and do an echo, and then we're going to put one here. Up, 
I think the hardest part is when you get yourself a bit caught into a corner somewhere or, you know, um, so if you do, just sort of travel down the seam of something um, or cut off, you know. You have to cut off, you have to cut off. And there we go there and we'll just stop that one. So there's your swirls, yeah? Now let's do the floral swirl. So exactly the same thing. So put down, needle down. I'm just going to lift a bit short there. And we're going to do the same thing in this one, but we're going to add a little flower to it, little petals. Ready? So we go out and in, pause, come back out again. And when you get back over there, pause, your little petal. It's like a little half circle. Now let us see. A little petal, a little petal, and then a half one because I've got to the edge. And I'm going to echo that to about halfway and come out and do another E. Another E, that's a technical word. I'm going to come all the way around. I'm going to bounce back, I'm not touching anything. And now I'm going to do more petals. And each time I come back in to that point of the letter C where it joins on the actual flower, I'm pausing. Go over here and echo that one. Echo again to get yourself out a little and make a smaller one. Yeah. Come out. And again. And what you'll notice is that we're going to have a seam. So just run up the seam and then continue that flare on. Have an echo, another one. And then let's just work ourselves out to another flower. Work out. And we're going to do the petals on this one. And we've got to another seam again, so travel along, back across. And then you can do a small one if you want. Echo across there a couple. And let's do some down the seam and let's just do some half ones as if it's um, been behind that, that seam. So I'm just going to do that one now and then I'm going to travel along a bit. Do another one with a bit more of a swirl in it. And then do a tiny little flower petals. And then once I get to the end of that, I'm going to travel along that seam again, get myself all the way back out here and come back out with another one. I'm going to fill up the other area. And I'm going to do this here. I've got myself in a little bit of a corner there, so I'm going to echo best I can. And you will see that sometimes I go one time around in a swirl and sometimes I'll go two. And that's just the nature of the beast. And you can do those sort of things and don't sort of feel that you can't. Um, as long as you do it consistently where you'll have some with two, some with three, um, that's fine. It's always consistency that is the key. So again, that one's off the page. It goes behind the, st the stitch or the edge of the page, so to speak. And I'm going to echo around here. And I'm going to fill up that gap again like I did the other side. And I'm going to have these half. I'm just going to put that one in there. Come 
across and then do some petals in it. Done. Cut off. Am I? It's a freezing, is it? And that one's done. You see how you can make it look like it's um, going behind things and that sort of stuff. Now we have the square stipple. All right, so the square stipple is exactly what it says. You're going to stipple, but you're going to do it square. Oh, it's buffering, is it? Good on it. So you go down with a straight line, across, pausing each time, across, down, to the left, down, the right up cross down and you can cross over each other and up and you're just filling up gaps and they don't have to be all the same sort of size they can be different which is really cool you can cross over heaps you can zigzag along you can make really tiny squares and you can make big squares. You can cross over them three or four times if you want to. Makes no difference. It just depends on how much you want to put into what you're doing. You can go like a inside itself. What I do try and do is not make them all the same so that it looks more, I don't know, organic, I suppose. So that pause is really important. If you don't do that pause, you are literally going to have curved corners, yeah? So just that little second pause, split second. One, two. And that will create your point. Now I have not adjusted anything at all on my machine since I've started, have I? I haven't changed any tensions. The only thing I've changed was the thread because I ran out. So it just goes to show you can go from one design to the next and not have to fiddle and flop around with your machine all that much. Um, you know, and you're done. I should be good at spin stipple. Yeah, look. Look how cool that is. That would look amazeballs on a boy's quilt, even a girl's one. Looks good, doesn't it? So then the last one we've got is a stipple. So let's put the needle down in the first place and find ourselves a spot. I'm going to do this fairly large, well, not large, huge, but medium size so you can actually see it. And I'm going to explain as I go in my language. Um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. So out to it. I'm going to C almost to an S and then you come back in. And then I am coming down, a bit of a wiggle. And just creating less of a line by putting that little wiggle in. So a little wiggle, come back in, sort of echo around where you were. It looks like a bit of a dog bone. There's a bit of a point there. I could get um, taken to court over that from the quilt police for taking to court. Um, a little bit of a, like a dog bone, you know, the old sort of cartoon drawing of the end of a dog bone, that sort of thing. You've got to be careful you don't make it look snaky, like long, skinny things that just don't look normal. So, and you don't want a line. You don't want to create like a straight line of them either. You've got to be very wary of that. So 
Oops, a bit of a bow there. A bit of a pinch. Right on the edge of the fabric. It's not, it's not playing nice. All right. So this is just your basic. This is just your basic machine. Hey. Um. No, this this machine is not. No, this is this is the one I use all the time, but it's not a basic machine. Definitely not. So there's your stipple. So that's a really simple, simplified way of doing it. So I come in and I'll do this half, you know, start with a C, then come up to an S and then come back to a C. And see that there? Oops, the days, I've got my hand right in the way. See this here, this bit here? It's like a bit of an end of a bone. Oh, God, I've got to get my finger in there. There it is, there. So that there looks like a bone. So think of a dog's bone. So when you want to do a bit of a, a wiggle around, sort of think of that dog bone thing. Um, there's another one just to get myself around without making any. So that, that's almost a line. See how that becomes like a line there? There's a line in between and that one there. See how it looks like there's a line? That's what you've got to try and avoid. It's hard to do, but, you know, it. look, it is what it is in the long run. But I don't go straight across or straight down like in rows like that. I go there, 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 there. So I go in a zigzag motion to take out that that up and down thing. All right, so I'll just move the camera, zoom around a little. And what you do with this next is you literally get your scissors and or your or your your blade your ruler blade and you go up there and you trim that in between those two stitches that you did oops that'll stop it from fraying like coming undone take off the bottom bit cut it on the line Cut your edge bit off. You have to do that holding it down. Okay, cut across that line, that top line there. Cut in between those ones. Don't cut on your stitching. Cut on that one. Cut on that in between and on that one, that line, cut on that line. I tried to do that and got messed up trying to keep it rounded. It takes a lot of practice. It's actually not a good one to start with. Um, a lot of people say, oh, you know, stippling, you should start there. It's easy. No, it's actually not. <laughs> You're better off starting with things like crosshatch and then um, the sashiko type look or the, the orange peel look. Um, then maybe go into the bubbles, um, maybe then even into uh, paisleys or the square stipple. And then once you can, if you can master... The, the paisley and maybe the bubbles, then you can you can actually work on a stipple. It's not as easy as people say it is. That is a fallacy. It's probably one of your harder ones. Um, it's just that that's what people try and make you believe. All right. So now I have a whole library of, what's this? Eight different stitches that I can use. And I can get... I'll do it on this side because my writing's on that side. But I can go, okay, well, let's put these straight line ones together. Let's put the, well, we'll put that with that. No, we'll put it with this one. Do you know what I mean? Like, put them together in sections. I've got four here, no, five here and three over there. And then you've got those all together. You can put a hole through them and put one of those round loops or you can pin them or sew them together whatever suits you um, and just pin it like that and there's your library and you might put a bit of ribbon through it 
and um, I'll show you the things I mean. These things, okay, little hinged rings, and they just clip open like that, see? And you can snip a hole through, or you can get your scissors, whatever. Doesn't need to be much, just needs to be a hole. You can even try and snip it that way. It won't work because it's so thick. There we go. Did it cut right through? No. Got a hole there now. I can make it right through. Then you can go like that. Just snip a little, make a hole right through, snip a little, and make a hole right through. It's a great idea, isn't it, Pat and Stella? And you then, at any time, you're, you're sort of sitting at a quilt and you're going, oh, what am I going to do next? You know, you might be doing a quilt as you go and you're sitting there going, oh, God, I'm sick to death of doing crosshatch. Um, I think I want to do some paisleys. You know, you might go through your little list here and go, yep, yeah, no, nah, I reckon I'm going to go with paisleys, have a bit of a practice, and then off you go. Well, you know how it works. You've got the name of what it is um, or what you call it. And then when anyone asks you, what's that? What do you call that? You've, you've got an answer. So did I go right through that? Yep, I did. There's my little doodad. There it is. Okay, so then you stick that through there like that. I'm just going to put them in any order, whichever way they come. And... You can probably get 10 at a, at a time on there, maybe more. And do that. That's all right, Heather. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, I am going to go for a, a quick break. We're going to come back and have another live. So just like that, hook that over. And she's done, ready to go. Look at that. How cool are you? And you've got your own little library. You can put them in alphabetical order if you so, you know, wish. Stitch in the ditch. Oh, look, your world is yet to, like, full on be happening. Don't worry about that. You will be doing these in no time. If you start practicing doing 15 minutes a day and you keep doing that or 20 minutes if you can a day and just keep doing it, you will get to doing these. All right, easy peasy, but it's practice, practice. There you go. That's how it works. Someone's going to get that in their order this week, so um, I will decide that later. Thank you, Karen. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thanks, Debbie and uh, Pat, Heather, and everyone else who enjoy, uh, joined in today. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I think it was a great little demo too. I'm glad I got to... Um, uh, get all those stitched out for you and uh, I'm glad you got to see them so those um, someone's going to get this little sample bit um, and you've only ever done by hand Stella oh my gosh my life is not long enough to do everything by hand I said that many years ago when I first started okay ladies thank you again so much for joining me I will see you guys very soon with a I oh, guess you can see more colour Look at all that stock. Um, so you will see me soon. I oh, know. What can I say? And um, thanks, Lynette. And I will uh, be having some trims. Uh, not so much. Oh, no, I've got a few little trims and I've got some, uh, some little patches to show you and some silk brocade and all sorts of things. Fabric, of course, and jelly rolls got to get through all these things and three o'clock we're going to do another demo and what's that one? Oh, oh that's the ruler work yes we're going to do the ruler work that's right and then um 
Oh, don't be scared of it, Stella. Make it your best friend. <laughs> um, thank you, Terry. Appreciate that. Um, and then once we do the ruler work, we're going to do another sale and we'll go a bit longer, but we'll do a quick short one very soon. Let me have a quick cuppa and take some Panadol. Shouldn't have drank so much last night. <laughs> I think I drank myself sober. <laughs> do I look hungover? I feel hungover. <laughs> See you ladies soon. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Louise.